Hello everybody, I'm Strawberry Shogat and this is Elite Lord of Alliance. It's a free to play hack and slash action MMORPG with anime inspired graphics. So let's take a look. Now, I have a couple of characters since earlier, because frankly I had to get in test and test a bit before doing this video, so I could actually make some coherent statements and just not just ramble. So let's create a character. Okay, as you can see here, there are four races to choose from. The Kartu... The Lero, Sapiens, and Naro. All of these races, except the Naro, come as both male and female. The Naro comes in only female. Now, race is so far only a cosmetic option, so you can frankly pick whichever race you want. And I think we'll go with a Naru. I haven't had the pleasure of doing that yet, and I like the nice art assets. As for classes, there are five classes. The Blood Knight, who is a tanky class. The Mage, a range DPS class with lots of area of effect spells. The Sniper, another ranged DPS class, but that also have some crowd control, so it's a bit mixed between damage and crowd control. Psychic, the Psychic is a healing class. It also has some damage, but as you can see, it's mostly focused on healing. Now in the I have tried it before in the early game, it's just fine going solo, so you shouldn't let that deter you, but I'm not sure yet how it works solo on the higher levels. And with the final one is the Assassin Warrior, a single target melee DPS class. So what should we do? Let's see. We wanted to play a Naru, so let's do a Naru Assassin Warrior, and our name this time will be D S Oh yeah. Let's go with that. Time to do something about our appearance too. Now you have six skin colors to choose from. The color varies based on race. But there are only six options. Let's go with that. And we have 12 hair colors. These also varies based on race, but there are always 12. So let's see. What's the most red or pink? Let's go with pink. We have the head option, which actually is a hair option. And there are 20 different options. From what I can see, the options of hairstyle are the same for each race. So, what should we... Let's pick that one. And as for faces, there are... Oh, only 10 faces. I know some of the other races have more. But 10 is fine. Yeah, let's go with that one. And finally we have eye color. This also varies from race to race. So... Yeah, let's go with that. Now in total there are quite a lot of options actually, so... You should be able to customize your character quite well. But, without further ado, let's get into the game. Mm. 
Now the game starts with a tutorial area. This is quite quick and you should be able to finish it in uh, well under five minutes actually. But it teaches you the basics and gives you well your first couple of skills and one or two levels. As we can see here you can talk to an NPC either by left clicking them or simply by clicking the F button while standing close. This is very nice, especially as sometimes people can't seem to help themselves from standing on the quest NPCs, and then it's really good to just have one button to press. But let's take a look at the options menu before we continue. So, as video, we have screen mode, full screen, windowed mode, and windowed mode, full screen. The usual. We have anti-aliasing, not sure which kind of anti-aliasing, but we have it. V-sync, trail effects, and bloom effects. On top of that there is also some basic shadow quality options and effect quality options. There isn't really that much to say about the video options because there are barely any options. There you, you have the most important options, so I guess there's always that. As for sound options, this this is nice. Separate sliders for almost everything. This is something I really like to see in a game. So, well, A plus on that, I'd say. Although I wish you had the option to also choose which audio device you should put, have the output to. On top of that we have the screen display, which is just uh, basic MMO stuff, showing names for yourself, NPCs, pets, HP bars and other such things. Message display, once again not that much to say, there are a couple of options to display different things, but nothing spectacular to talk about. And community options, well... It is nice that you can set these, but nothing much else to say about it. So, let's get on with our adventure. What does this princess want with us? Let's see. A fortress invasion, oh my. And we got our first weapon. Now we have to go talk to this uh, guy, uh, Armu, to get on with the quest. Don't be afraid of blood. So it's time to eliminate some ogres. Well, let's eliminate ogres. We have one skill so far, which is heinous blow. On top of that we also of course have basic attacks and let's see what we have got in as a oh that was the storm my bad well now yes yeah, you see we have the standard attack on left click and we have a skill on our one on the hotbar this well what to say I think it flows quite light nicely and it reminds me of games like Diablo 2 and uh, Torchlight, Torchlight 2 and uh, other such games when it comes to the actual gameplay. It feels a lot smoother than certain other ARPGs I have played so that's a real nice thing. Okay, what's next? Talk to this guy. There it comes. Level 2, a very nice and clear graphic and also a list of the skills we got that unfortunately decided to disappear before I had a chance to check it. But, well, we will have plenty of time for that later and first of all, we will have a chance to actually try some of it out. Now as you can see here, each 
you have three stances to use. This is true for each class and all stances focus on a bit different type of combat, well, or at least part of the combat. Now, what do I... oh yeah. So, it's time to try them out. Yeah. As you can see, you're quite powerful already in the beginning. Now, let's try out our second stance, which is Chaos. And our skill here is another AoE with a bleed effect. Let's see. Yeah, excellent. And our third stance, execution, freezes enemies. Okay, that's nice, so a bit of crowd control. Oh, I love the music in this game, it feels, it's very nice, I have to say. And as I said, you, you feel quite powerful already in the beginning. Now, you do have multiple weapons, obviously, since each stance uses a different weapon, so... If you really want to focus on one particular stance, you have to make sure you actually have a use for weapon for that stance. Anyway, that's the end of the tutorial, so now we'll have to see the perhaps not stellar voice work that comes occasionally in the game, but let's do it. Oh, I'm sorry. Here it comes. No. My bad. Now it's time to go through this zone, then the tutorial is finished, so let's see. Yes, let's track down this baby and kill some stuff. But first, let's switch stance again. As I said, you feel quite powerful. Which is nice. I like it when the game actually makes you somewhat of a useful character, not just some pointless chump. So let's see, okay. We got a better claw, and we got a new side. And now comes Guntara, the boss of the tutorial. So let's see if we can... If we can actually use... There we have it. Like that. Now we will get an example of the beautiful voice work of this game. It is a bit wooden at occasion, but I'll let you listen. Many captains of the Alliance insisted that Gantara, fatally wounded, couldn't have run far. So they ordered knights to comb through the Rumen Valley. While searching the shadowy valley alone, I found Gantara bleeding on the ground. The moment I saw Gantara lying there, I knew I wouldn't have another chance and I attempted to deliver a fatal blow. Suddenly, someone attacked me from behind. Unprepared, I fell back onto the ground. The mysterious attacker walked slowly away with Gantara as if he was taunting me. I was so upset that I was responsible for Gantara's escape. I left to find Gantara after telling Armu that I would take responsibility and complete the mission. However, I couldn't find any traces of Gantara. It was as though he had evaporated. I searched for a long time without any results. I then returned to Baratan Fortress after receiving a telegram that said And with that, the tutorial is Armu. finished, and you get to the first, well, real hub of the game, the Baratan Fortress. So let's take a quick look at some of the other stuff that I feel could be kind of important. Most 
Mostly this actually, let's get a pet. This pet will become your friend. Mm, oh my, this did I, oh yeah, I forgot to bind, friend. sorry. So, now I can teleport back to the Bartram Fortress at any time. So let's pick up a pet. This pet will become your friend. So, we hatched the egg and let's see what we got. A hellhound. Now this first pet is always the same, but it differs from race to race. And it's also a mount. So you can move around a bit, which is nice, but... Great, and we got the skill rolling and weasel blade, okay. Now we have the roll skill, which is used for avoiding, well, basically whatever you want to avoid. It's quite nice. You can also see that you have the roll gauge, so you can roll an unlimited amount of time. Anyhow, that's... Well, that's all I have to say for my first impressions of Elite Lords of Alliance. I'm sure I will be coming back to this game later on when I've had a bit of a chance to play some more and see if I can find any paywall in the game or if... It's fine to play it free to play without getting completely insane. So I wish all of you a... Well, a good whatever time it is.